President Xi Jinping met with senior officials from across the country to discuss the economy and potential tough times ahead. Joining me now from Massachusetts is Ravi Ramamurti. He's director of the Center for Emerging Markets at Northeastern University. Um, let's get right to this GDP report. China is seeing an economic slowdown. Is it all a result of trade tensions with the U.S., or is there something more, and is there really a cause for concern? Well, I think there are three factors. You touched on one of them, which is the trade dispute with the U.S., but there's a, another long-term fact that's been at play for, for a while now, and that is as China gets more prosperous, it becomes harder to keep growing at the 8 percent or the 10 percent rate. So we've seen a secular decline in the rate of growth for a number of uh, quarters, and I think that process is continuing. But on top of that, also, as you know, the Chinese government made a conscious uh, decision to try to improve the quality of growth and not focus just on the rate of growth. And that meant mainly cleaning up the credit markets and the financial sectors. And that was starting to take effect in the early part of 2018. And so the combination of all of that was accentuated by the trade dispute. Now, is this something to be concerned about? As your report mentioned, you know, 6.6% rate of growth is a very respectable rate of growth by world standards. It was 6.8% last year, so it's a bit lower. So in that sense, it's not way off from anything that we've seen in the recent past. But I think what could be a cause for some concern is quarter to quarter, every quarter in 2018, the rate of growth was slower than the previous quarter. So that question of whether this trend will continue or we may have bottomed out and the Chinese economy will start to rebound. That's the big issue. Yeah, and addressing these numbers, President Xi Jinping said that China's economy is in generally good shape, but efforts should be made to balance stabilizing growth and guarding against risks. So what does that mean, and what could we see happening in China? Well, I think the obvious one big risk that everyone is concerned about is the U.S.-China trade dispute. That injects a lot of uncertainty for China. It also injects uncertainty for the U.S., and I think we may be at the point where both countries will be ready to, to cut some kind of a deal. So that's one risk that has to be addressed. The other risk is, the, is the, the whole issue of deleveraging the economy. Chinese economy is highly leveraged. This is something the administration is very conscious of. They had a serious plan to try to control that, but I think they may have to backtrack a little bit because in the short run, they may have to ease up on some of the, the breaks that they were applying so that the economy can rebound and we, we can start to reverse the, the trend we've seen quarter to quarter in the last year. You know, something else that Beijing has been working on is the Chinese real estate market. President Xi is calling for a long-term mechanism for stability. What does that look like? Well, I think China is going to have to find ways to make its capital markets, financial markets, more sophisticated than they have been at this point. There is a very high dependence on bank borrowing, bank lending. For a while, there was a heavy dependence on peer-to-peer -peer lending, which was a, a risky uh, proposition because it's, it's quite unregulated. There were all kinds of people in the market uh, adding to the uncertainties and risks for borrowers and lenders alike. So I think building the financial markets, allowing private investors and private borrowers to make more of the decisions themselves and introducing more transparency into the markets is probably something China needs to work on in the long run. We know that there are more U.S.-China trade talks coming up at the end of the month, um, the NPC, CPPCC, coming up in March. What is your outlook for China in 2019? I think uh, a lot will hinge on whether something has actually worked out at this meeting in March, before the March deadline. I I'm hopeful that something will actually be worked out, because I think both sides have begun to see that a trade war is actually a costly for both parties. Now, you can argue that it's costlier for China than it is for the U.S. I think that's probably true. But it is not cost-free for the U.S. So the U.S. is also beginning to see the impact. We saw that in the last quarter of 2018 when the stock market here took a beating. Therefore, I think if that issue is solved, that major source of uncertainty for both countries and for the global economy will, will be lifted. That allows China and the U.S. to then address some of the fundamental problems that both economies face that they need to wrestle with. But this was an additional problem that has surfaced 
in the last year that if you can take that out of the way, then China can get back to its uh, sort of long-term trend of growth rates of 6 to 7% on a stable and steady basis. All right, Ravi Ramamurti, thank you so much for joining us from Boston. We appreciate it.